This is another special moment on Cheap Heat where we surprise you with a guest that you would not normally expect and that even if I did tell you was coming, you still wouldn't know what you were going to get. My guy Violent J from Insane Clown Posse on Cheap Heat. Uh, first of all, Jay, what's up, bro? How are you? I'm very good, man. Thanks for having me, brother. Thank you for uh, thank you for jumping on, man. Um, I first met you when you came by Hot 97 a few years ago. We had a really in-depth conversation that I enjoyed, and we like barely got to tap into the wrestling part because we really went so deep on the Insane Clown Posse music story. Um, and you told me that day that that had been your first time, all your guys' years in hip-hop, it was your first time ever being invited to a proper hip-hop radio station when we sat down and did that interview. I'll ne- first of all, I'll never forget that interview. And uh, second of all, yeah, it just so dope, man. Something changed over time, you know. I think the people that are running the industry, the music industry, and wrestling, um, they're not the same people when I was coming up, you know what I'm saying? They're more open-minded, they're more accepting, and um, and we didn't, we just were in our own tunnel for so long, we didn't stick our heads out to even look what was going on. And that show was probably the first time we did it, you know, and, and to be getting respect like that and, and the, the respect you guys were showing us just flipped our wigs, man. You know what I mean? T- times have changed, you know what I mean? Well, that's super dope, man. And I remember, like, halfway through the interview, I realized Ebro and I were so into getting the the, the backstory on, like, just Detroit old-school hip-hop stuff and your relationship with Tech 9 And anyway, for people listening who aren't hip-hop heads, you know, the Insane Clown Posse is, you know, maybe you just remember them from, I mean, for the people listening to this show, you probably remember them from wrestling, but you also may remember it from Gathering of the Juggalos or hearing Howard Stern talk about them or wherever the different kind of cultural touch points that you found them. But we got so deep into the hip-hop stuff that I was like, man, we got to have another conversation about wrestling altogether. Um, so for people out there who may not know, we'll get to when you when you guys started popping up on WWE and WCW television. But how early was your like first foray into wrestling? Well, you know, we were backyard wrestlers. And um this goes way back. That, that must go way, way back. Early, oh, early yeah, this 90s, is, this is 90, late 80s. 96. I mean okay. 86, 86. 86. Yeah, when we met, you know. We we were backyard wrestlers. We took uh, railroad posts from the from the um, train tracks on the other side of town. We carried the bitches on our shoulders back for you know till we had four of them. We had to wait till it rained, my man, for the ground to be soft, and then we pounded them with sledgehammers into the dirt, man. Them them bitches were indestructible. Four railroad posts. Then we went garbage picking and got a uh, garden hose and use that for ropes and wrap tape around them. And you could actually climb the second rope, the first rope, whatever, top rope, whatever. It was a sturdy-ass ring, you know what I mean? I guarantee you, whoever lives in that house now, that ring is still back there. <laughs> it was that sturdy. Huh? Yeah. Wasn't good. Probably, did... st- bigger, probably more of a foundation than the house. But um, how did you guys how did you guys know how to even do that? 86 feels so early for backyard wrestling. Like that didn't become a phenomenon that people really started hearing about, I feel like, till the 90s. Man, and we took it to the fullest, man. I mean, we my mom was a, a janitor at a church, so she would um, sneak big things of hot dogs out, and she would bring four carloads of chairs when the church was closed on the weekend uh, on, uh, when we were doing these events, and we would set the chairs up all around the ring, and my mom would be uh, cooking the free hot dogs, and we'd put flyers out in the neighborhood, so we'd have kids back there, you know, and we we just went all out, you know, and uh, took it as as serious as we can to a point where we had three different houses with similar rings built in their backyards, and we use them as our traveling venues. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, what happened was in 1990, there was a, a promoter named Malcolm Monroe here in Detroit, and uh, he was running shows. Um, and uh, he would actually use the Sheik in Bobo, Brazil. They were still working, brother, against each other in, in 91. Okay, she, uh, uh, Bobo couldn't even, um, he wouldn't come to the ring and he wouldn't, he, he would come to the ring <clears throat> like this with a couple guys actually to hold him up. And he would get in the ring and he would hold himself up by the ropes 
and Sheik would come over and Bobo would lift a hand and hit him. <laughs> Sheik would sell that for two minutes, you know what I mean? But I didn't care. It was them, you know what I mean? It was them in this main event. And I was, and so I lied and told Malcolm and Roe that I went to the Chris Adams uh, wrestling school in Texas. <laughs> you made this up. Yeah, I lied my ass off. But I knew I knew how to work. I mean, I didn't know like the um the inner workings of I thought I could work, but I knew how to vote. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um right. yeah, yeah, so somebody didn't show and they put me on the card. And that night, um Al Snow was running a show the next month, a two ring battle royal, and asked me if I wanted to be in it. I was like, hell yeah. And from there on, I started wrestling independently around the Midwest, and Shaggy would be my manager. You know what I mean? And was he, he, a, was he a fan? Me. Was was Shaggy a fan also? Oh, we were backyard. He was the one. He was the athlete. He was, he was one the real to athlete. Go. You know what right. I mean? He was really good. You know, but you know, I was nineteen, and 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 he was seventeen, so he was just managing me. You know, and um. But yeah, we did that for a while. But once I got in into the um, business, it was a different time back then, man. We were the only young motherfuckers in the in the uh, locker room. We the only one. Everybody was fat, old, big beard, big beer bellies, and uh, the only young ones were me and Rob Van Dam and Sabu. That was it. In and those are, and they were the were first perfect. guys you met. They were some of the early, some of the early guys you really met in the industry, right? Yeah, even on that very first show, my very first show, I met them because we were kind of huddled in a corner, the only young guys. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else was dogging. You know, they'd be like, when when I started working in the Midwest, they'd be like, "Hey, Joe, you still doing that rap?" <laughs> they all be laughing at me. You know what I mean? And like, uh. I just remember it was so different because they were all fucking old. And, and when I mean that, I don't mean that I was young looking at 29-year-old thinking he was old. I'm saying these motherfuckers were old. Like, like they were all over 40. You know what I mean? The whole right. dressing room. And it's not, it's just so different now. It's just so different, you know. But back then, yeah, we we were the only young ones there. There was literally nobody else. It was all old dudes on on. Almost all the shows I went to, it was like that. Every once in a while, we might see a young dude, but but it was mostly dudes well well above our age when, when I broke. You know what I mean? So at some point after bouncing around and doing indie stuff and working on music, you get a call from RVD and Sabu to, to come to ECW and try things no, out? No, 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 no. We, we were doing music, and right away we, we realized, man, we loved wrestling on the screen much more than on the other side of it. You know what I mean? Like, we'd be in the dressing room, and the wrestler would have his naked ass bent over, right? You know, I'd be like, hey, Joey, you know, he'd turn around and be a naked ass right here. You know what I mean? And just motherfuckers having conversations with their dick six inches from your nose, and 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 we didn't like the oh, and the, and the disrespect. You know what I mean? We didn't like the inside of wrestling. You know what I mean? D driving, you know, um, all that way to not to not get paid. You know, driving six hours to not get paid. You know what I mean? Or driving across the state hoping to get used and not getting used and not having no gas money to get back. You know what I mean? All the all that we didn't like the inside of it, you know. But what happened was, when when, when I was nineteen, hip hop had overtook in that dream of wrestling. Me and Joey couldn't deny it, man. You know what I mean? Hip hop had overtaken it. There was just no way around it, you know. But from the time I was fourteen to nineteen, and Joey was, um, you know, seventeen to twelve or whatever, um. We had already put all that positive energy into knowing we're going to be wrestlers. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't even a wish or something we wanted or something we were hoping. It was a fact. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't even a worry that we might not do it. It was just hurry up and grow the fuck up so we can do this. You know what I mean? But when hip-hop overtook that passion, you know, we switched our dreams and we didn't have any interest in uh, becoming wrestlers no more. So by 95, when uh, when um, we still loved wrestling, but we loved watching it, you know what I'm saying? Not, we didn't right. want to do wrestlers. We knew we were going to do rap. 
But right, and you're already invested in the rap thing now. Trips, say, I'm sorry, what? No, and you're already invested in the rap thing now. It's starting to move for you guys, Oh, right? yeah, we're not even thinking about being wrestlers anymore, you know? But we still love – we used to take trips down to ECW Arena. I remember Rob Van Dam sent me a um, a VHS, and he's like, you got to see what's going on this promotion I'm working for. I put that motherfucking tape in, bro. I was just like, holy shit. You know what I mean? The, that's the first time I ever heard a promotion being chanted. ECW, you know what I mean? It was like so lit, man. And um, so we start driving down there and catching the shows, you know what I mean? And um, man, I almost I got so many stories from that. But but we we used to go down there and and uh so then when when ICP started taking off, it's so it's so crazy. Okay, in we put out that tape, Strangle Mania. Have you ever heard of that? A DVD? No, it's a it's a DVD, a DVD, a music yeah, DVD, or wrestling DVD. Strangle Mania. We put out a DVD in in '95. Okay, called Strangle Mania, and it was <clears throat> all the deathmatch stuff from Japan. Okay, I'm oh, talking about uh, the 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 uh, FMW stuff, the uh, Onita and all them. You know what I mean? Okay, I'm about to hold. I'm about to share it with you. We're about to look at it as we talk about it. Hold up, brother. Thanks. Nobody thanks you gotta understand something. Nobody had seen this wrestling. Nobody had seen none of this at the time. I'm flipping through wrestling magazines and I see a little corner page ad in black and white: deathmatch wrestling, exploding rings, barbed wires, uh, uh, <laughs> bombs, and I'm thinking this can't be real. So I ordered it. So they sent me back all these VHS tapes, and there's no commentary on it. So we went in the studio and did commentary over this, right? Man, if this wasn't bootleg, this thing would be platinum probably three times for us, bro. The amount we sold. We went insane selling that DVD because not only was the commentary funny, the footage was unbelievable itself. You know what I mean? Nobody had seen deathmatch wrestling in the states at all. Then I'm so, watching it right now. Just seeing seeing these different highlights you got on this are crazy. Yeah, yeah. Nobody had nobody had seen all this. You know, we just didn't put it out. You know, what I'm saying? and um did the commentary. So what happened? Hey, was let's that, let's that hear. Let me let me let me hear a taste. Let me give him a taste of you. Yeah. But to my friends, including you, 3D, you guys can call me. You know, well, I hope you like blood. I hope you like guts. I hope you like wrestling, because we've got the best for you right here. You're going to see the likes of Cactus Sack squaring off against Lama Nama Numi. And not only that, folks. By the way, you guys are wearing the tuxedos with the face paint, and you're superimposed <laughs> in front of the ring like the old school way Vince McMahon was doing it. It looks like yeah. the beginning of Superstars. Yeah, man. Bro, this, this DVD was classic, man. And we do all the commentary, do such funny things on it. And um, it became so popular. This, By the way, this was the first clue our fans had any idea that we were wrestling fans. The very first link between ICP and pro wrestling was that DVD. And people were like, okay, wow, they, they obviously watch wrestling. You know what I mean? And... um. So we had an event called Strangle Mania Live in 1997 in Detroit. And we brought in Madman Pondo, uh, I believe Necro Butcher, um, all these guys that had never, man, America had never seen Deathmatch Wrestling. The only place doing that was down in Louisville was um, Ian Rotten and them doing the deathmatch wrestling. So we scoured the nation and heard they were doing it. And we hired them and brought them up to Detroit to do this live wrestling ma match called Strangle Mania Live in Detroit at St. Andrews Hall. Sold out, 1,000 people. And the main event was going to feature ICP versus the Rednecks, two wrestlers we had dressed as racist hillbillies. You know what I'm saying? And no, no everybody's like, ICP's going to wrestle? They had no idea we knew how to do fucking anything, bro. And we went out there and tore it up. So that was 97. <clears throat> um, 99, um, yeah, ECW, we're, we're friends with Rob. And um, ECW, we're like, man, see if they want to do something with us. You know, because by now our, our band's platinum and everything, you know. 
So they they uh, brought us in, and we did a spot. What you're talking about? The, it was ECW's second pay per view, and um, Rob Van Dam and Sabu came out and beat our ass at the beginning, and uh, we were starting a tour the next day, and Rob Van Dam did his kick and popped the a hole in my he, he, eardrum, knocked my hearing out of my my right ear. It was gone. I'm, I'm backstage like can't hear nothing, you know. And uh, our tour started the next day. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we went to uh, a hearing doctor in the morning and they were able to put some kind of little piece of something over the hole and suddenly my hearing came right back, you know. But anyway, that's how that happened, yeah. You know, and followed up by that, in 99, WWE called and they were like, we got this team called the Human Oddities. We want to know if you guys will make the music. We're like, motherfucker, what? Do you know we wrestle? They were like, huh? Like, I was a wrestler, man, before we rapped, you know. So they 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 flew us on a, out to um Stanford and we wrestled um Tom Pritchard and filmed it for Vincent Man. You know what I mean? At the WWE, we walked through there and got the so dope, bro. And then we so started that's how, with the that's how it worked. At, yeah, it's, we started with the oddities at SummerSlam. At, at the garden we debuted you know what i'm saying and the thing is what's so funny is you gotta understand we had already put that in the energy the secret or the laws of attraction or whatever you call it i say this all the time but i can't say it enough we had already applied that energy to that dream so even though we you know from the time i was 14 to 19 that's like five years of, of knowing we're going to be wrestlers right so even though our personal dreams changed in 1999, it came knocking, and it was like, "Yo, you you still want this?" You know what I'm saying? And we were like, "And we were like, let's do it for a minute." You know what I mean? So we did it. We 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 were doing Monday night for two for two or three months every Monday night, and sometimes they would film, they would have a raw live, and then film it the next night on Tuesday. You know what I mean? For next week, so every other week was live. You know what I mean? And um. We did the damn thing, man. We were wrestling dudes that we used to get their autograph behind Joe Louis Arena. You know what I mean? And here you are. Now we're, we're watching uh, a moment from Raw in 98, I believe. You guys um, and, and, and the oddities all in the ring. This is a crazy time, too. You're not just in WWE. You're in WWE in a time that is now regarded as the hottest time, essentially, in the history of the business, maybe up until now. You're backstage. Austin's backstage. The Rock is backstage. It, this is like such an insane period. Um, the, the Undertaker's around. Um, as we see uh, Disciples of Apocalypse, DOA with Paul Ellering talking to Michael Cole here. What were your relationships like backstage? Were, were people cool to you? The first time we um, got to WWF, it was WWF back then. This time we got there, we needed to paint up. So there wasn't a dressing room in the, I mean, there wasn't a me, a big mirror in the regular uh, dressing room where all the boys were. So they, they took us into this room in front of the big mirror. And the only other two people five feet behind us sitting on a bench are the Undertaker and Stone Cold going over their match that night. And me and Joey are painting up, looking at each other in the mirror like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> we can hear him. Going over the spots behind us, you know, five feet behind us. And if I were them, I'd have been like, man, get these two fucking clowns out of here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, seriously, I don't know why they didn't say that. I would have been irked. I was irked for them. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's a big private locker room. They're having this conversation. We're just there, you know. It, it felt so awkward, you know what I'm saying? But so many, so much freshness. But 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 we at our relationships, as you asked, I guess, I didn't know it then, but we had heat. We weren't liked, you know, but that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? What are these rappers doing here? You know what I mean? I, you know, and I didn't, cer we certainly didn't pay our dues as wrestlers. Right, to them. I mean, you did pay some dues. Oh, paid we, paid, some. we paid some dues, but we had no business being there as wrestlers. But what they don't understand is we we fully paid our fucking dues elsewhere. You know what I mean? Like to be, we earned our right to be asked to be there. 
because we paid our dues in music. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all the same having seen them both from the inside. You know what I mean? So the point is, you know, anyway, but I guess we had heat there and I, I didn't know it at the time, you know, until we, until, uh, um, Man, I didn't know it at all, man. Everybody was cool as fuck, you know. We we had that one thing with the headbangers. Who do people say you had heat with? I just heard things, you, you know what I mean, that, that like we weren't like, to, you know, we were bringing boxes of swag every fucking, every every week, giving them out. To, you know, if we'd run out, people would be like, bring, bring one next, bring more, ne- bring me one next week. Every week we were bringing huge boxes of jerseys, you know, just, just trying to show the fucking, um, love we knew we, we were we had technically snuck in that bitch you know what i mean and we were just we weren't taking any opportunity anybody wouldn't take you know what i mean but we were trying to be respectful you know what i mean but who knows you know let me ask you this bro when you're at a strip club you and your boys and there's 10 hotties on a stage right and you and your boys are sitting at a table, and there's another table of dudes just eyeballing you. You know, what are you doing to get heat with them? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who knows? You know what I'm saying? We weren't in that bitch wilding and throwing shit at them, you know, or being an asshole. People just didn't like us. You know what I mean? Like they don't deserve to be here. Did you ever have a bad did you ever have a bad in-ring experience well, as a result you know, here's of it what's or no? funny? All right, we 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 had this thing with the headbangers. And we were supposed to go out there and um, the headbangers were supposed to, we were supposed to fight the headbangers, right? And they beat the shit out of me and Joey. Literally, literally, I almost shit my pants. Like, literally, I almost shit. They were beating us so bad, right? And um, we got backstage and, um, you know, they came in, the, in our locker room. They were like, everything cool. We were like, yeah, everything was great. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you still didn't want the smoke. Yeah, you were trying we were to be respectful like, what still. The fuck, man? You know what I'm saying? But they were like, um, they were like, um, they were like, everything straight. We were like, yeah, it was cool, you know. And um, anyway, ever since then, they've gone on. I think Mosh went on interviews and he's saying that the 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 um company told them to beat our ass. You know, because we were asking mm. for more money. And you know what sucks, bro? <clears throat> I've always hated he- being in a, hearing adults lie, grown people lie. You get what I mean? And I'm not saying that they didn't tell him that, but somebody lied somewhere because we sure as fuck weren't asking for no money, you know, no extra money. You know what I mean? We didn't give a fuck. We had rap money. We right. You were thrilled to be this, there. You know what I mean? But he was saying they told him to they told him to beat our ass, right? And um <clears throat> because we are on our way out. And when I saw him saying that in that interview, I'm like, well, first of all, we weren't on our way out. We ended up joining the headbangers. You know what I mean? Like, how do you know what he's talking about? Like they told him to be it just makes for a good story. You get what I mean? They told them to beat our ass. WWE told them guys to beat our ass because we were on our way out. Well, how do we end up uh, joining the headbangers then? You know what I'm saying? Let me let me ask you, was 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 there a substantial difference when you guys got to WCW? Did it feel Holy much different shit, than being bro. in it WWF felt at the time? Night and day. First of all, we didn't know we had heat in WWE. But when we got to WCW, bro, it was like Shangri-La, man. I'm telling you right now, it was awesome. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, like at WWE, they were giving us like two grand, two grand a night of performance, right? We were like, it's not about the money. The problem is we're getting all this extra attention by being with y'all, which is what we want. People are thinking we're a wrestling gimmick. They're thinking we're, we're not really rappers. You know what I mean? Can you just run our commercial? Like a 30-second spot on Raw, you know? And that's it. It's not about nothing. We just want the commercial. You know what I mean? It's not about money or nothing. And they were like, um, yeah, Vince Russo was like, we got you. Yeah, yeah. So week after week after week after week after week, we're like, why didn't you run the commercial? You know what I'm saying? And um, he's like, it's coming up next week. 
So that's why we ended up walking out. You know, the, the night I took the stunner, the next night we we were um supposed to go in there and, and uh um Luna Vashan was supposed to beat our ass, right? And our manager at the time was like, man, it didn't it was one of those deals where you go live Monday and then you shoot Tuesday for the next raw. And our manager was it was Tuesday, and our manager was like, Man, they didn't air it last night. Walk, walk, it's done, walk, man. We're just being taken advantage of. Just walk, you know what I mean? We don't care about a thousand bucks a week. Walk, you know what I mean? So we did. We just left. We were painted up and everything. We walked right out of the side of the arena. You know what I'm saying? We got in a cab and we're gone, you know? We just like, all right, like, how long are we going to do this? You know, all we wanted was a commercial. We were leaving, flying out from fucking L.A. sometimes all the way to Philly to be on TV for, you know, 30 seconds. You know what I'm saying? And it was just a lot. Like when you get the three month point, you're like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But then we went to WCW, bro. Awesomeness. First of all, the the um when we got there, we met Vampiro. And he's still one of my best friends to this day. You know what I mean? And that was the first thing. We had this guy on our side. You know what I mean? The other guy there that was on our side was Raven, who we also knew, you know. So right away in WCW, we had that going for us, you know. Then they'd be like, um, how many guys you bringing in? How many, how many flights do you need? And we'd be like, um, seven? <laughs> and they'd be like, all right. <laughs> they'd ask us no questions. They'd fly our whole crew in. You know what I mean? So all our boys could be like, this is dope, you know. They just didn't care. It, it kind of makes perfect sense. You guys are in the perfect spot to enjoy WCW because they were loose with money. They wanted they wanted to be hot, and you guys had your own thing you thought that, you know, that made you hot. So, like, it actually makes perfect sense. This is a period when a lot of wrestlers had complaints about WCW, but it makes perfect sense that for you guys it was the perfect scenario. You got left alone to have a good time. They flew your people in, paid we you well. We had so much fun perfect. at WCW, bro, that – when we weren't on tour, we would jump on tour with them. We'd have our tour buses following their tour, and we'd be doing the house shows and shit, wrestling. You know what I mean? Just just because we loved wow. it. Wow. We weren't required to be there except for Monday. You know what I'm saying? But we'd be, we'd be on tour wow. with them doing house shows and shit because we were having a ball. You know what I'm saying? They gave us total wow. fucking creativity. They didn't say that. They didn't come in and say, you can do whatever you want. But we quickly learned we could. You know what I mean? Like, they never said no to anything we wanted to do. Even commentating. At one point, me and Joey started start commentating. Bro, if you can hear us commentating, we were saying the funniest shit. Oh, my God. This thing was so heated. Yo, it we still sounds like, like you can't. It still sounds still like you can't, can't believe it. You never hear no shit like that <laughs> to this day. Sting was in the ring. We're like, I like the way the spandex hugs his childbearing hips perfectly. <laughs> Just stupid shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we were just wilding. And we were, we had Vamp bringing the JCW belt to the ring. You know what I mean? We were cutting promos, giving shout outs to all our JCW wrestlers. The audience is like, who? You know what I'm saying? Is that a blast, man? So much fun. We 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 wow. did like three months with WCW, right? Then we quit for a year and went back. We went back for a second run. You know what I mean? I remember when we when we went back. That's when Bischoff and Vince Russo were there at the same time. You know what I mean? And Russo's the guy we walked out on in wow. WCW. I mean WWE. You know what I'm saying? And now he's back in WCW. I think he knew he was leading us on or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? Because he certainly wasn't mad. You know what I mean? And he wasn't like, I'm not, you know, he wasn't like, I'm not working with them or nothing like that. They're unreliable. You know what I'm saying? He never he never gave us any inclination at all. He was even upset or held any type of grudge from when we walked out of the side of the door <laughs> in WWE and bolted. The first. Uh, <laughs> right after learning what we're doing that night. You know what I'm saying? Um. Listen, listen, I wanted I wanted to do a little thing here and get the, the cheap heat audience, get to know you. I still want to have you back another time so we could get into more specific stories 
like with specific wrestlers um because you really do have such an epic story the fact that you guys were able to pull it off is one of the all-time coups i kind of feel like that for the things i've gotten to do in wrestling well you feel like you guys have pulled off you're one of the in wrestling <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I bust my ass too, and I, but I feel the same way you do. I'm like, damn, they're letting me do this. Amazing. Like, I'm just happy to get to do it. So, um, real quick, I just wanted to ha have you jump on real quick. Also, for everyone out there, if you want to get more on um, ICP right now, there's a doc that just came out, super interesting, called "When Dead Bug Met the Duke." It's a documentary on YouTube. Fascinating stuff there as well. Um, but anyways, I got to jump, but I wanted to get you on Violent J. And next time you and Shaggy are, are in, in the city, we'll get together in person Part and run this two, thing back man. again. We got to do it. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you for Thank making you, time man. and joining us, man. I appreciate you.